what's up guys how's everybody doing welcome back to the channel welcome back to uh the podcast uh in this podcast i have a great guest david serber is that is that how i pronounce your name that was perfect, that was perfect, man. perfect. That was yeah if you guys have no clue i'm just gonna give you a rough um rundown what happened in november right uh, yeah pretty exciting <laughs> so david was featured in, on all of news outlets being one of the first guys going and touching and testing out the monolith in person i think you were the third person on the site right yeah so i uh i think we had a helicopter crew find it right the public yeah. safety and yeah. then we had a uh, uh, another, I think, pretty high-level influencer business owner who helicoptered in. So I guess you could say I'm the first one in on foot. <laughs> I see. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, when I saw that, I think I was in, like, Pennsylvania with my family. That was, that was during um, Thanksgiving weekend or something like that, right? Yeah, so it was leading up to Thanksgiving week, and okay. I, had, uh, I had work on Tuesday. Coordinates yeah. came out, like, Tuesday morning, and uh, I had off on Wednesday. So I'm like, all right let's just do this thing on no sleep, you know? So I left at 10 at night, had no work the next day, so I was ready to roll. So. That's crazy. So, all right, so the back end of the story is I reached out to David. So we were just there yesterday, by the way. Uh, we're both pretty tired because uh, he went there, not for the first time, for the second time, just for me to create this video on YouTube. Um, hopefully that will come out on January 1st. And this podcast will come out right after to like give a give a story of like how we uh, uh, got to collab or made the video, right? So basically, when I saw the story on my phone uh, um, on Chrome, there was an article saying that uh, Monolith was discovered somewhere in Utah, and then I saw your face on the article. I pressed on it, and I think they tagged you or gave the Instagram handle. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna reach out to see if he's available to like do a collab right um and then that's how i reached out to you you weren't the only person that i reached out to you uh the guy who removed it later on i the thing is this was a whole probably uh leading up to this moment it was like a three-week thing right because yeah, when i yeah, it was about three weeks of just trying to get other people together and exactly because when i reached out it was just the beginning when it started and there was only one monolith and that was in utah uh, the other ones were not like found in other states or other countries like that was not a thing No, they were popping up like, like probably 20 of them now exactly so. now. They're popping up everywhere like monolith here monolith there and I really wanted to do the story just like um, le Leading up to that moment you finding it right. I didn't know how crazy it would get like all around the world, right? Yeah, and then when they removed it I was like, you know what, let me think of a way to make a video of like incorporating you, the guy who removed it, and a couple of other guys who were there in the site, right? So obviously, some of them did not answer on the DMs. And I was like, you know what, let me resort to this project just to go investigate, was it actually man-made? Or was it like aliens, you know? Uh, I mean, if you guys watched the video, you guys already know the answer. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think like, it was enough of excitement around, hey, is this is this something special? Which I think in 2020 it would have been pretty amazing if it was, right? Yeah. Um, maybe like something otherworldly. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it, it rallied a bunch of people together under something yeah. like positive they could focus on in the middle of all these the negative news cycles, right? I see. So it was a pretty cool journey either way. All right. So the question everyone wants to ask, right? So how did you find the coordinates and what made you go out and see the monolith, right? I know that you told me this yesterday. We had like a, what, 14-hour car ride? <laughs> uh, and then like just to cover this uh, for a lot of people, uh, what made you go out there and um, what motivated you, motivated you to go discover the monolith? Yeah, so I think I'll start with um, the coordinates, right? So yeah. the coordinates, actually, I had a pretty small part in even finding or locating, right? So the, yeah. the Reddit team, I mean, they're just awesome really uh ingenuity like great ingenuity right okay so um there's a couple websites one of them's like flight and yeah. if uh, you know whoever was on reddit you know they had a paid subscription to that so they okay. can look at all flights even flights in the past and they saw that the helicopter from the public service flight crew mm -hmm. right 
they could see where it dropped below the radar screen. Drops below yeah. the radar screen. That's telling you like, hey, maybe it landed there, right? So, um, <laughs> so then uh, probably a group of ten of them on Reddit were all on Google Earth searching inch by inch, right, throughout the desert in wow. that general vicinity. It took almost thirty six hours, I think, to locate it. So, yeah, um, that's crazy. I, I like. You have to be that crazy enough about the monolith to just like go to Google Earth and like find it and throw the coordinates out there, right? And I think that's why it had um, like who's investigating <laughs> this stuff? Like, <laughs> please comment down below on this video. <laughs> I like. Uh, I think I'm on one of my YouTube videos. I put the link on there from the Reddit. Yeah. Uh, uh, the stream because it is kind of funny, right? So you got all these people and they're like, "Oh man." I'm like, you know, 12 beers in and I still haven't found it. You know, they're just searching for days. 12 beers <laughs> <You> know, in. <laughs> like, like these just sitting there for hours. Anyway, they, wow. finally, they finally locate in a vicinity of what looks exactly like what the pilots were in. You know, they were yeah. referencing red rock color on Google Earth to the video. Okay. Being really like particular. And they saw this linear shadow and they're like, we think this is it, but there's no way to confirm. And I'm yeah. just like, you know, obviously thinking the monolith is cool and I like hiking yeah. and so it's not even confirmed and you're like all right i'm gonna pack my shit and go yeah yeah well basically like, they needed they needed to like they wanted someone to confirm yeah so i was like screw it because even um what if you drove for seven hours for nothing <laughs> well you saw it yesterday it's a beautiful yeah. view yeah so it's I a beautiful think, view like, yeah for me i like hiking and being out in nature right so oh, so that's your passion yeah. so it yeah. doesn't even feel like work no yeah, that was like the dumbest question ever. <laughs> <laughs> like for me, it's like, okay, I'm not going to lie. It would have sucked to drive six and a half hours. And exactly. Like, oh, it's a yeah. stack of rocks. But at yeah. the end of the day, like, I saw 12 shooting stars. I, like, was under the night sky yeah, out there in, like, a little bit of peace and nature. And then on the way out, it's, like, beautiful red rock. You saw that. So, yeah. Uh, it was awesome. So, the guys, you guys don't see the part where, like, I don't know. Like, I, I kind of struggled as a passenger sitting next to you going <laughs> off road right yeah. so in the videos like it looks like oh it's just like a little drive over like the i don't know like the rocks or something no like that was painful <laughs> I mean, we're just like going like yeah. up and down under your subaru it was like crazy i felt like i was back home <laughs> actually <laughs> well the, and the, like the funny part about it is you drove for six hours right so yeah. you're probably like pretty tired at that point anyway what, yeah. the day of the the first no, the paved road was amazing like yeah i have no complaints about that but when we hit off-road like for maybe 45 minutes it was like 15 miles that's right that's where it wears on you right after it, that long of a drive exactly and yeah. then every time the rocks hit on the bottom of the car and I'm making like a popping sound i was like heartbreaking moment i'm like <laughs> oh my god let just stranded not out there i don't want to get stranded like in the middle of nowhere because i've never been through that right yeah. and uh what you guys might not know is david is a veteran yeah. uh iraq and afghanistan veteran so for him it's just like fuck this like th this <laughs> this shit is too easy for me you know yeah. Yeah. if we get stranded like i got this kind of thing but for me i'm just like freaking out every moment <laughs> it was pretty funny like i enjoyed it it was entertaining for me <laughs> yeah 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 so uh with the hiking and stuff like yeah. how do you think you developed that passion like do you think was it through like um uh, the wars you went to in iraq and afghanistan or like is this something you grew up with uh in the nature all the time going out hiking yeah that's a good question so i think it's um it's more of how i grew up you know like every every summer um i'd go up to my grandparents and and they had a bunch of acreage up in northern new york yeah and my my grandfather um like towards the end of his life he had you know a pretty large garden in the backyard like the way he had his land set up, it was almost as if he could sustain off the land, except okay. except for, um, like you know maybe a few grocery needs or something like creature yeah, like, comforts. But he yeah. he had it to a point where there was like, you know, uh, a thirty foot by you know, fifty foot garden. Um, That's really he had, nice. You know, pond, streams, fishing. So I got to spend my whole summer up there, and he really taught me to like respect the land, but also um, have those moments of peace with you know our planet and exactly. to love it and take care of it and. Uh, sometimes i feel like our world is so artificial yeah and we're surrounded by technology all the time all the freaking time and there's yeah. no moment to slow down in our lives a lot exactly. of, you know and so getting out in nature gives you that moment you know when we were out there yesterday i even yeah. stood still for a minute i was like you hear that oh you did that for like a couple <laughs> times you're like three times because like like I don't, I, don't, I don't i don't know how it feels to be like in dead quiet right and you're like you kind of gave me this hint like stop breathing stop breathing you know like yeah. and stop i stopped breathing and i'm like 
this is mad quiet. Yeah. Like, this is so quiet. No yeah. animals, nothing, like, just complete silence. Yeah. And it's weird because we never hear that in our lives anymore. Even yeah. at night, people want white noise, right? Because Ex- you need something. Exactly. So. Exactly, yeah. So uh, the the short answer is basically you grew up with, like, <laughs> in the nature, right? <laughs> short answer, yeah, yeah. So. That, that's awesome. So, um, I don't know. Uh, I've seen videos on... Uh, YouTube or like Facebook was trending like crazy like last like couple of months ago. Uh, the guy went out running or hiking somewhere in Colorado, and then he gets in face with like the mountain lion. You know, that's the only thing that I'm scared of, right? Yeah. Okay, so I wasn't scared before because I don't know the consequences of hiking. So I blindly went without thinking of any animals being there, right? So during the summer, we went out with my friends to hike in Colorado. We were there for six hours. And me seeing that video at home in the comfort of my house, I'm like, what was I thinking hiking for six hours and like a couple hours back? You know, like what if I was in that situation where the mountain lion is just like dead staring at my face? You know what I mean? Like, I would probably be dead. <laughs> you know, that video is just like, I don't know, it shook me up a little bit. But um, I don't know. I, I And the thing is, I still blindly go to the hikes without thinking about it. You know, I think that's like, <laughs> like you always got to have contingencies. I even told you my first time out there at the mountain bike, right? And I'm like, yeah. the mountain bike's going to get me either out of here a lot quicker or in because I didn't want to stop uh, if the car would have Yeah, I don't think the mountain bike would be any quicker (laughs) than the mountain line. Dude, it would have been a little... Oh, no, not quicker than that mountain line, but yesterday, what I have on me, I had, like, a knife on me yesterday, you know? And, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You always got to have some contingencies and... I I came just with my cameras. I was like, all right, that's it. That's the only thing I can protect myself with. Well, good thing you had the knife because we're going to touch base on, like, what we did in the place with Monolith, right? So even though, like, I took a flight from Chicago to Salt Lake City, and then the next morning, we went out and we drove from like 6:45 or 6:50 a.m. all the way. At, what, what time did we got there? Do you think like so two? We probably got there 1:32 o'clock. 1:32 yeah, o'clock. Seven hours total stopping. I probably have pictures too. Yeah. Like what time? I think it was like there. It was around 1:30 or two. Yeah, let's let's check out what time we got there. Road for like 45 minutes. Yeah. So I took the picture at 2:38 p.m. at mo. All right. So this is a crazy part. <laughs> It says Moab. Yeah. Like, we are at Moab, but that's not that's Moab. Not it. no, it's it's like two like hours five. away from <laughs> Moab. Yeah, yeah everyone you know? thinks, like, oh, it's right outside the city. It's, like, it is in the sense that it's two and a half hours, and, and Moab's the nearest city, right? Like, yeah. there's nothing else around. Ex- so. Exactly. The way we got there was crazy. Yeah. So, all right, let's 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 touch base upon, like, um, why I came here and why I wanted to do this, right? I'm kind of, like, always uh, – I'm an adventurer. I, like – I like to go places and discover things that will make me tick and keep going, right? And this is something that is crazy. The first monolith that was discovered here in Utah, you know, I don't want to go to California or other places that's been erected, like, just recently, you know? Because you automatically, you know, it's man-made. People are seeing the trend. They want to hop in, and then they want to build something and then put it out there. And then see it. With me, I was just like, I want to go to the site where... The first one was discovered like for five years for five years. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy that it was there for five years. Right. Um, and no one's claiming this piece as an art piece. Obviously, it's not like alien made. It's a human made piece because uh, we found like adhesive. I still have the adhesive in my backpack. I would have liked for that to have been like a microchip can I, can I, or something. Sh- sh- should <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, like yeah, pull yeah. it out? You got it. Oh man, or it disappeared. I don't know. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, it didn't disappear. It's in my other backpack. Um, all right. So yeah, it we looks found, really cool though. We 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 got the adhesive from there, and then what was crazy that I'm pissed. The person who removed it, right, or the group of people that removed it, or they claiming to remove it, right? Yeah, claiming. Yeah. They're claiming. Um, I've reached out to those people. Obviously, no answer from them. I want to know why they did it. And obviously, the the statement he made was like, oh, let's preserve the nature. Let's keep the nature that's untouched be untouched, yeah. you know. But obviously, when we drove yesterday, 
there is like tarmacs like there there's like how can i say there is there's like campsites they're like tire tracks well, it's like people have been already going there you know what i mean to, something to we, didn't reali- we didn't realize last time is there was literally uh cow pastures yeah so one thing that someone had hit me up about is like hey you know, some of that soil builds up over 10 years and, the, and it's actually truly more alive than not, even though it's not moving, right? There's bacteria yeah. that grows up. Yeah. Uh, it grows there and actually protects the, the ecosystem. And I'm like, hey, I yeah. got that. But yeah. there's literally 20, 30 cows yeah. in the pasture, in that area, walking all around. <laughs> yeah. The, the soil is not going to be contained within that ecosystem. Anyway, it's pretty much an active farm, yeah. as we saw later. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. And yeah, that place is not, not untouched because from far away we were driving and we saw like a mile down, uh, from, um, where we parked the car to walk down to the monolith. There was like a house too. Yeah. You know, somebody built the house. And then when you mentioned it, I couldn't see it. Right. I couldn't see it at first. And then when I saw it, I'm like, okay, this is a square box. (laughs) It looked creepy. It It looked creepy. creepy. Yeah. And then they're, they're like cows around. And the, I just really wanted to go there. I'm like, is there a civilization? Is there like people living there? Like, if there are, let's ask questions, right? So obviously, we went out to the monolith site. We walked down there. We found a bunch of rocks just like piled up on top of that site. I don't know who would do that. Like, who's crazy enough to like cover the site up, right? They covered it up, and it was like all filled in with dirt, so you couldn't even see dirt. the the triangle. Yeah, or, like the actual cuts anymore right you exactly yeah I, I was i'm so confused why they did that like why are you trying to cover this thing up right and then everyone's so like oh is this a alien thing or is this a human thing like why don't you just go and discover for yourselves right i don't know if the state department is trying to like find out about this or just they just don't care you know so that's why i guess we went out there to do the work for all of you guys <laughs> um, yeah so we went out there and then we removed all the rocks that were piled up on top of that triangle um and then we started to like remove uh all the dirt piles that were there and then as you guys saw on the video uh david takes out his knife and then cleans uh uh the part where it was sawed right so they used like electrical saw yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they did that look like an electrical saw? They used a saw. I mean, it definitely yeah. probably needed to be plugged in. I don't know if it, sometimes the battery operated saws don't have the same power. So, yeah. I mean, if if that was, then great. But I'm honestly, we even saw that riverbed where you could even probably get a truck up in there. Exactly, uh, and then so. yeah, pro- they pro- you think that they got like an ATV there? I think ATV or a truck. ATV or a truck. Yeah. I mean, even that that place we found that house. Yeah. It was. Uh, Stainless steel on the outside. Right? Oh, let's oh, talk man. about it a little later. Let's, know, let's, let's just mention just that. Saying, like, I, let's just talk about the. the I'm the, picturing the, a truck driving over there, you know? You're, so. you're picturing a truck driving over yeah. there. So, and then we discovered that uh, it was really sawed. And then, plus, to keep it in the place, they used uh, adhesive. It w- I think that's adhesive, right? And uh, Adhesive that has been uh, there for five years, and it dried up so much that. It's like now plastic, you know, like if you bend it, it's, it will snap in half, uh, basically. Yeah, it looked like it looked really brittle. Um, they used a ton of adhesive, though. Whoever was getting that thing in there wanted it to stay. I mean, they did a good job. When yeah. I when I walked up on it that morning, like, yeah. there was zero corrosion on this thing. Yeah. Um, they had it sealed um, at the bottom with what looked like some silicone. Yeah. Um, but it might have actually ended up being that adhesive that we were finding. Yeah. And then... Um, and and the only thing it really wrong with it was it was missing two rivets up top, which honestly I think was oh, the, the thing, before. Yeah, the thing that got me convinced that it was actually man-made was the rivets. Yeah. When you were filming, in the video I saw rivets. I was like, all right, this is, <laughs> this is definitely not like you know. <laughs> the, the people who are like thing. Space Odyssey fans from yeah. from the book, like Space Odyssey 2001. The monoliths are obviously. Um, all solid one piece yeah they're rectangular or something right they're sending out signals this was uh three pieces of stainless steel riveted together right and it was hollow yeah um so yeah Yeah. it would have been cool if it was otherwise but all right but to the guys who removed it i think his name is sylvan right you guys are assholes i have to tell you guys you guys just assholes like literally you guys were saying that there are no human beings there but a mile and a half outside of monolith there was a house and a container. There was a 
in a farm and there was a bed and then we saw like what uh, a whiskey a bottle of whiskey there too in that house yeah. and honestly like yeah one person can live off the land and still leave no trace and still not be be messing with the ecosystem and the soil yeah the thing is is like when you have 20 uh cows on a farm area and and here's the funny part the house was a mile and a half but when yeah. we left the monolith the yeah. first place oh so you you did you track the the mileage yeah, yeah so like, it was mile and a half I, it was no no it was um a mile and a half to that house to that house yeah the cows were um maybe the first cow that we saw right yeah. off the road that was yeah. 800 feet from the monolith yeah so all that terrain that they were worried about is is a operating farm exactly you know so it's like you can't tell me that that is untouched land yeah. um so i'm all about the leave no trace uh movement i think yeah. it's great i think yeah they were inauthentically pursuing uh, some clout there. Yeah, as exactly. Opposed to living up to the leave no trace mission. Exactly. So. Um, and I guess they got a bad clout, right? And everyone's just hating on them right now, including me. Like, because like, how crazy would it be for that thing to just be there, right? Until like not let it be touched, you know? I think the State Department should have just claimed that as their own and been like made it a sightseeing place, right? It's 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 like it would be the Times Square of <laughs> Utah. There, there's thing, like, you know? um, I don't know if I'm sounding like literally like arrogant, but you know what I mean. I don't I don't yeah. want anyone to touch that thing. No, no, no. I think it frustrated a lot of people because it's not the only piece of art out in the Western Desert. Yeah, people travel all through Arizona. Yeah, um, all through Utah to see red rock art and yeah. it's, it's like a mix of uh you know metal art amongst nature and it's um <clears throat> very simplified right it doesn't take up a lot of foot space i think yeah. it was maybe a foot and a half by a foot and a half yeah you know and uh it's minimalist art throughout the western desert that was another example of minimalist art yeah probably an ode to uh mccracken or potentially an ode to space odyssey 2001 you yeah know? so yeah mccracken died in 2011 though right think around that time yeah. 2010 2011 so it wasn't him definitely no so please whoever created this like reach out to us we won't expose you <laughs> i mean unless you want to be exposed right um so yeah by the way uh so when we got there we got enough pictures and videos to like uh remove all the dirt from there and then all the I don't know if I could. I, I don't know if I should call it the silicone or uh, adhesive. We removed all of that, and then we packed our stuff, and we're like, okay. Uh, by the way, I wanted to mention one thing. When you got up uh, on the canyon to find if anyone left a trace of an artist, you know, because what did the Reddit people say? Yeah. So a few people were writing me asking if if anyone left any clues around. Yeah. Um, like, hey, maybe someone scratched something in a rock wall behind you know, an object or something. So we went yeah. up top, I went around and, and was kind of hunting for clues just in case. So I see. So when you were up there and I was down there and then you were gone for like good five minutes, you know? And then I was like, David. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just scream a little bit louder, you know, David. And I'm like, and then third time, David, nothing. Fourth time, David, I'm like, fuck. Like, <laughs> did this guy just fall down? You know, yeah. like, we came together, like we have to leave together. You know, I can't, I, I can't go back to the civilization without him. You know what I mean? And I was like, God, what the fuck am I? Like, I had like the worst scenarios in my head at that point. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna scream one more time, David. And then I hear you. I was like, God, okay, this is cool. <laughs> hey man, there was some like two cool valleys up there, and I'm like, man, that looks just like this this slot canyon here. They probably yeah. put another model. So I had to go. I had to go check, man. You know. Damn. Yeah. No, I shit my pants during that time. <laughs> the quietness just freaked me the fuck out. Uh, so uh, we packed our stuff and then we went out basically to go back to the closest city, Moab, right? And then me and David, we were like, "All right, so that box thing, are we gonna go check it out, or are we just gonna leave?" And I'm like, yo, we got to check it out. Like, <laughs> I'm not leaving without, like, seeing what that box is. Like, that looked like a house. You know what I mean? So, um, take, take on the story. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I wasn't for sure about going out to the house, but we went out yeah. there anyway. And uh, <clears throat> I'm glad we did. Yeah, yeah. So, we, we park out front. We go around the corner and we, and we kind of look in a window and that's when I got a little creeped out because in the window it was like this really small room, small bed, like not made, it was just a mattress on like a box spring and then 
and then uh, like you know, like a curtain nailed to the, I guess the the doorway. What would have been a door? Yeah. Well, yeah. we we peeked out the window, and then I was like, all right, we peeking out. I see a bed there. Uh, cool, but I want to knock on the door and see if anyone's there. So we went around. If you guys seen in the video, knocked on the door, and then no one's answering. There was like a little creak, that sound. <laughs> Someone like stepping. I'm like, oh, it seems like somebody's in there. But when you knocked and I heard the creak, I'm like, yeah. oh, this isn't gonna be good. <laughs> yeah. I, was thinking, I was thinking somebody was in yeah, there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Imagine yeah. someone just coming out with axe or like yeah. you know, a rifle. They would have got a free Subaru out of it, I guess. But, you know, so. <laughs> free Subaru? <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't think like no. You've informed your your family. I've informed my family where we're <laughs> going. Right, if we're missing. You know, the State Department of Utah would probably like looking for us, right? But okay, uh, let's get to the point. So yeah, I yeah. get into, I get to touch the door handle, and I try to twist it, and then I see that it's open, and I look at David. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at him like, don't open that damn door. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like. I will. <laughs> I open the door. I enter, and there's this, like a fireplace, and then there's like a whiskey there. And I feel like, and then the whole thing of the house was made out of stainless steel, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or or just like metal piece. And I'm like, I think these are the guys who did it, right? It was. It was. It, it looked just like the same metal. I mean, yeah. It was ridged on the the front of the house, right? And you'll see in the video if you watch it, it's ridged. But, yeah. You know, even some roofing material, or I just find it hard to believe is they've got all those tools out there. They're yeah. obviously local because I do think that it might just be like a very base mini home to operate that farm out of. I think I think so. There, you know, but yeah, I think so too. So when I saw that, I was like, you know what? I'm convinced that these people are probably the ones who made it, right? I wouldn't, who, be, you know. I wouldn't be surprised. That whiskey was pretty empty. Maybe they got drunk one night. I was like, let's go put a freaking monolith out there, man. You know what I mean? They probably watched Space Odyssey, too, at that time. (laughs) Yeah. uh, So that was crazy. And then we we went back on the road. And in total, we were were out there from the road that we took yesterday from 6.50 a.m. We got there by 2.30 or something. And then we were back by 11.18. Yeah, I think it was almost an 18-hour trip nonstop. That's, right? that, was ridi- all, that was so. ridiculous. And the thing is, a lot of people would be like, oh, this is pain in the ass, right? It didn't feel like a pain in the ass doing no, that. it was fun, man. It was so fun. Yeah. Like, me and David, we were in the car. Like, obviously, we're doing a podcast, right? We had our own, like, intimate podcast, like, for, like, hours on end when we were on the road, you know? We got to know each other even closer, yeah. especially uh, David telling me all the stories about Afghanistan and a little bit of Iraq, but mostly Afghanistan because, like, I'm from that part of the world. I'm from Uzbekistan, yeah, right, yeah. right up north, and um, I confirmed a couple of cultural things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he was telling me a lot of things about uh, uh, Afghani people, but it's it's pretty crazy. But uh, I want to mention that, like, whatever you said, like, yes, there are like a couple of things that are similar, but life is totally different totally different it's like arrogant to say this it's like mexico and the united states right things are really rough in mexico with cartel and drug dealers right and then u.s is like much safer compared to mexico right i would i I would probably put that in the category of like uzbekistan and afghanistan because our borders are protected by i think Russian Federation. I remember you telling me that yesterday. Yeah, and I think like yeah, the biggest thing I I took away from both of those experiences is that if you take governments out of everything, yeah, like basic family, yeah, know, like human beings all want the same thing. You know? Yeah, we're all just trying to to you know live the best life that we can. Yeah, some are given better opportunities and more opportunity than others, and I do think that sometimes it's like politics and government that get in the get in the way. Uh, of, of the, lives, of, right? of the peace them. right yeah well politics so. is all about money at the end of the day so <laughs> um at the yeah. yeah and people are the ones who actually suffer in that region right and um whatever you told me about like how there is like how can i say contradiction between like being a male and a female in afghanistan and I feel like that's like the society we live in. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. not just Afghanistan. I feel like it's a lot of the part of the world where I feel like uh, it's called toxic masculinity, right? Yeah. Is that yeah. what it's called, right? It's yeah. just like 
just want to be just want to have more power than women and then like um how can i say and uh justify anything that you do as being oh i'm a man and that's a woman <laughs> kind yeah, of and thing I, I think the scary part right is like especially people in position of power and yeah. just human beings in general i think if they want to be convinced of something they can they yeah. can justify their actions in any way that they want right i see yeah it's pretty scary to yeah think about so yeah um by the way i wanted to like also talk about like how similar is the united states to that part of the world i feel like united St- not, not the whole united states obviously i feel like um this utah colorado area uh are very similar to like the central asian area uh, i would have mentioned uzbekistan i would mention like kazakhstan kazakhstan has their own grand canyon that's just like Grand Canyon or probably bigger. I have no clue. Like you guys need to make your research. Yeah, uh, you don't hold me, me account. How beautiful it was out there, though. It, you know? it is, yeah. And the thing is, not a lot of people have discovered that site yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I've seen like a couple of videos on YouTube, and they're like, "Oh, Grand Canyon of Kazakhstan." I'm like, Kazakhstan has Grand Canyon, you know? Dude, I'm like, so surprised. Round two, we'll head out to the Kazakhstan <laughs> Grand Canyon, man. I'll go yeah, out there. <laughs> uh, Kazakhs, like, <laughs> hit us up. <laughs> Uh, on the dms um yeah and tajikistan is uh like colorado uh, or the mountains of um utah here because the mountains i i see here like with uh, a lot of snow it's pretty beautiful it looks like the mountains of tajikistan i've never been to either of those places just to mention like not the mountains of kazakhstan i've been to kazakhstan but not the grand canyon of kazakhstan and i've never been to tajikistan but I would uh, want to discover that part of the world, too, because, like, they're directly on the opposite sides of the globe, right? Right. With so similar terrain, with which is pretty awesome. Yeah, with similar terrain. And I would like to discover all that parts of it. And uh, obviously, um, and also, how can I say, they're on the opposite side of the globe, but I think the people are actually the same. Like, you know, they're like Mormons here, they're religious people on this side, right here on Utah and the Colorado area, who are like really intact with their religion. And I think that it's like the same kind of thing, like back home, <laughs> you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. And then when we were sharing like the stories of like how uh, th- this group of people are uh, towards their women or how they are uh, respectful of their religion, you know, how they're strict with their religion. And I'm just seeing, I'm, I'm listening to those people who are from Utah, and I'm like, that's back home. <laughs> you know well, what I mean? I, and I think, like, with with anyone, and this is why I'm a bit a big advocate. Would you, you like, you, you've, you, you've seen both sides, right? So you've yeah. been to Afghanistan, and you've seen, like, this side, too. Would you correlate, like, or, or like, are they, like, if I, and then, and like, yeah. in the same kind of thing? I guess for mode. me, if I stay away from, like, the religious aspect of it. Yeah, and the I cultural just, aspect. And I just get down to, like, cultural aspect is, I think that's the biggest thing is, is a lot of people, especially in the United States, right? Sometimes yeah. don't, don't ever leave the United States. And I think when you do, no matter where you go in the world, you're yeah. going to find out that most this people whole, are the same. This whole us and them mentality that yeah. countries and nations try, a BS, and try right? to project. Yeah. There is, there shouldn't be an us and them is like, you'll go and learn and get to know human beings at a very basic level is we're all the same. We're all the same. We all have the same wants and needs and, and desires. And, um, I think that sometimes there's a lot of separatism that happens. Yeah. Know? And, uh, so I could argue if I stay away from like any of the religious or political stuff is, yeah, absolutely. I can guarantee you that, you know, people here have the same wants and needs as, as people anywhere else in the world. So. Ex- exactly. Yeah. Um, and I love Utah and I love the people of Utah. Uh, I, I mentioned that way too many times yesterday too, probably. <laughs> um uh yeah and that is crazy um i hope to come here i've always said this uh, i want to move here sometime i don't know probably in my 30s or something because i really like it here there's so much mountains and like hiking is one of the things that people do here hiking swimming or like right yeah utah's got it's a uh, five national parks all in one one state or like skiing or yeah you know, like but you can do, you can do anything yeah. here right like yeah yesterday we drove we drove seven hours and oh we, we drove to through many many yeah, terrain right. like there's like snow it was like sunny snow sunny you know and then we hit up we hit up in a four-hour period of that drive uh, yeah. top of a mountain snow 
fog, yeah, nine fog. degrees, and then uh, almost 50 degrees in the middle of the red rock desert, right? Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. So, uh, David, um, <sighs> the question is, um, now, what is your journey with hiking and stuff? Like, yeah. you love doing this stuff, right? And obviously, you uh, have your YouTube channel now. You just set up. Yeah, um, I just set that one up. Yeah. Uh, wh- what are you thinking you're going to do with that channel? Or, like, uh, what wh- what do you want to do with, like, um, with hiking stuff? You know, like, are you trying to... Pr- in the future are you trying to promote like uh go go outside and you know uh soak up uh the nature and stuff yeah i think i had i had like a you know a bunch of probably over a thousand different people write me and i asked a lot of advice on like what do they like to see and i realized there's a huge interest out there for for like nature and and seeing different parts of the world that people don't get to see yeah so i'd really like to turn it a little bit into you know, like a kind of an adventure channel, but also mm-hmm. make it instructional either about like the environment and some survival skills. And um, I, do I think I think this is something you would be great at, Thanks, like man. survival yeah. skills, because uh, you were in the military for what ten years? Ten years. Yeah. Ten years, and you have seen like the worst things out there, and you could like maybe teach people who are out there trying to like get a class in survival survival skills right so if you have left me somewhere in like the middle of the desert like i wouldn't know what to do you know Almost what i mean yesterday right i'd be like <laughs> where's my uber you know like how can i get my postmates <laughs> kind well of thing, and here's know? the cool part is there's like for me is yes i have a pretty good understanding of it but there's a ton of experts out there but who's to say i can't reach out to those experts collaborate with them and like get their insights and exactly the yeah. thing is uh i feel like you you're an expert too for doing it for 10 years you know, like be, being out in Iraq and Afghanistan um, as an American and just seeing and uh, going through war and st- like you, I would call you like, you yeah, know, thanks, an man. expert yeah. at doing like in survival mode, yeah. obviously, you know what I mean? Um, like you told me you, you were jumping off from helicopters. You took like uh, offen- what was it offensive driving class? Like what is oh, it? Yeah. No, no. Yeah. There's different classes, right? Like yeah. offensive and aggressive driving course. Offense, for like yeah. Offensive security detachment. Yeah. yeah offensive like and aggressive driving yeah, class. Yeah, yeah. So like you've done all that. That's and the true, thing yeah. is like yesterday I was freaking the fuck out when I was <laughs> in the car with you. There were like, there was like a, how can I say it's the road goes down and up yeah. and David is just like, all right, so the only way to get through this is like 30 miles an hour. I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that fast, but yeah, no, yeah. It was a, like you needed some a, speed, right? And momentum yeah. of the vehicle to get through. Yeah. So. And then we're just like plow through the whole <laughs> thing. And then I was like, Oh my God, yeah. like this is insane. And, and the thing is, how can I say I live such a, I realize I live such a great life like in the West that I don't have to face these kinds of roads. Right. In my mind, I'll tell you, I haven't said it to you yet. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, God damn, this is stressful being in this freaking road. I wonder how people live like somewhere in Afghanistan. Every their day. roads That's are not lot, yeah. paved, you know? Yeah. I'm already stressed out from <laughs> this road. You know what I mean? I'm like, they're, they're probably screwed. And I'm like seeing that, like, um, how, um, I don't know how blessed I am to right. look to, to, live in a place where there's like paved roads you know you could order an uber that's that's, this like i don't think even kings lived like this back 200 300 years ago think about like you know the things that seem normal in our life yeah like having a paved road or yeah having water yeah even if even out like out of a faucet yeah there's a lot of human beings every single day who don't have that you know exactly so So the thing is like it's easy to see something from the screen right yeah like it's easy to say like obviously when you showed me that video of you coming out from the trail and stuff and then you're driving on the video yeah and and then i was like um it it seems like it's an okay drive (laughs) when i was when i showed you it before you came here that's that's why i think perspective is like so important to get out there right to get out there to uh actually experience it not through the cameras or like the the videos that we see but get out there um drive through those you know off-roading places and see the nature get out of your comfort zone basically that's what i'm trying to say and then uh see see how people live in other countries you know and then you will appreciate what you have 
even more right yeah and i think like just get in touch with uh being human again you know, exactly you get out there in the elements yeah. you're, you're testing your body you're testing your mindset a little bit exactly yeah and uh it does bring you back to say like man over thousands of years we've gotten to a, a level of comfort in our civilization like man this is what my body was originally meant to survive and design to like acclimate to yeah right and exactly i, I just say it's got to be in a structured manner and i think that's like part of what i want to do is be able to educate people on that so yeah. that they feel more confident in going out and doing some of these cool things and, and experiencing life in a different way exactly so our dna was designed to basically uh how can i say to uh get out there hunt you know for our food uh for our shelter or something bring food for the family and stuff and i think like there's a huge thing that i saw about monolith a class i think a professor teaches something about monolith right so uh like millions of years ago when humans were just like living in caves you know like stupid you know like not knowing anything yeah. the 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 guy says basically a higher power i think it's a god or aliens whatever it is right it's whatever the professor says he sends he basically sends the monolith to earth yeah. you know as a triangular shape as to uh advance human uh how can i say intellectual right so that triangle uh you could see it how can i say you could apply it to today's geometry right and even the towel work if you could see it th there's like a geometry of like that triangle you could see everywhere yep. in building houses cars even our structure of our faces and uh even though like i don't know if you've seen islamic art that has the loops and stuff even that applies to like the monolith shape you know when you so were showing me some of that art yeah like it's it's beautiful right yesterday yeah and yeah um, space odyssey 2001 yeah which i know we're going from a kind of a like um, that professor's perspective to a book, but it kind of yeah. it kind of is an ode to that, and it it the monolith in that book and but, in that movie, yeah, yeah. does s pretty much that's what it's there for, right? It's very similar yeah. as to um, like early early humans or prior to that, right? Yeah, kind of help design them and nudge them in the right direction. Exactly, you know? probably like a higher power just sends right. these yeah. uh, like metal pieces to be like, yo, figure this thing out, right? And then no one probably at that time has ever seen a triangular shape. They're like, what the hell is <laughs> yeah, this? Wait, right? What's going on here? What's yeah. going on, right? Yeah. And then the, the way Professor just like explains like the triangle, it's just, it shapes in stars. It shapes in boxes. It, it just works everything with like um, our, our uh, how can I say, uh, our environment. The housing, the cars, and everything is just structured in a geom geom geometrical way, you know? Right, right. So, and I was, like, pretty convinced that with Professor's theory, yeah. maybe that's why it was sent to Earth for maybe back then, you know? I don't know. I don't know if it was actually sent, though. No, I know no. Just, that's I, just a theory, right? Yeah, I think, like... But yeah. that's kind of what, what they tell that story of in, in Space Odyssey is, is... I don't want to ruin the book for anyone, so check yeah. it out. But... Um, okay. It's kind of it's kind of a cool concept. Summarize it though. Summarize it for yeah, us. Yeah. So basically, <coughs> the monolith teaches uh, you know our ancestors to human beings um, maybe how to start using their hands, like basically sending signals out, kind of what you're talking about. Yeah. And then they start learning to use tools, and then like millions of years go by, right? Yeah. And it ends up being you know a portal that brings you to a higher level of consciousness uh, within the universe. Okay. And to your point, it could, it could be God or it could be a higher intelligence. It, the book doesn't really say, right? It lets you translate for yourself. For yourself, because it it's, it's, it's your choice on what to believe in. Your choice, the, your yeah. belief system, right? Yeah. And uh, that's what I love about the book is it stays broad enough, but it's a really cool concept. Yeah. So. It stays broad enough for you to uh, find out what you believe in right at the end yeah so yeah i don't know the, this was a tricky situation with a uh, with a monolith because it's 2020 now anything is possible for me like whatever happened with covid and stuff i never ever thought that it, like it would happen right. like, if you would ask me december or november of 2019 that the country will lock down you're going to be forced to move out from this new york city apartment and then this city is going to be empty for a couple of months down 
a lot of people is going to lose their jobs, you know, and there's going to be a monolith found like at the end of the year in somewhere in Utah and people are going to talk about like alien invasion or something. <laughs> I'm obviously joking, but the alien part, uh, I also found on the article where, no, not the article, the Chrome uh, articles that I found yours in. Yeah. There was like a title saying uh scientists have just found like radio emissions from like the alien world or something i'm like this is before me coming to utah <laughs> yeah and i'm yeah. like what the hell are you saying bro stars, yeah like like and i'm thinking so that thing is real <laughs> you know <laughs> the monolith the monolith is from like the you know higher source or higher power from the aliens so but uh, i don't know that just messed me up in the head you know when i read that because it's it's not just like any news outlets. It's just scientists are right. saying that you know, like yeah, uh, radio emissions. Waves, radio emissions. Yeah, I think like yeah. you and I talked a little bit on the drive. Is is there's they found water on Mars at the poles. Um, they found ice on the poles of our own moon. Yeah. Um, and the, the whole importance of that is later you can, if you were to set up a base, right? You can yeah. melt that down and then create oxygen by separating yeah. the, the molecules. But it's like. I find it really hard to believe that if in our own solar system we're starting to sign, uh, find elements that yeah. are needed for life, that somewhere out yeah. in this giant universe there's not something. It's a giant know. universe, yeah. yeah. The thing is, most of us are really scared. Like, I've, I've seen, like, a Yes Theory video about, like, aliens and stuff. They go to the city in the United States, and from that city, they're, like, group of people who have seen aliens or, like, yeah. like I don't know, like... A alien spaceship you know and it's not just one person it's the group of people from the from the small village you know what i mean and then the guys who go there they just make fun of those people like how they could be how idiot are they to believe like there's like aliens and when they see like the real human emotion because human emotion doesn't lie when you express right. something right and these guys are just like after talking to these people they're like freaking out they're like yo i don't want my reality to be tested right now <laughs> like i want to yeah. reserve to my like yeah. you know to, to my arrogant way of thinking of no aliens right. you know like i want to keep making fun of these people <laughs> but they're freaking out because they believe that now there's aliens through the through those conversations yeah. because they're the ones who's going out there to investigate the whole thing and they're they're not just getting this word from one person it's multiple people from the same village right 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 and those kids just like freak out and i'm like laughing i'm like oh my god <laughs> this is probably me <laughs> this is gonna be me this if i head out to the monolith and see it <laughs> exactly so shout out to uh, the yes there you boys um yeah, um, I guess we're going to be discovering more monoliths out there in the world that are, like, fake, made in the garages. I thought about making one, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> uh, just to kill time, right, until 2020 ends. Uh, but um, that is the whole thing, guys. Uh, I don't know if you have anything else to add on to whatever we talked about. Um, no, I just... Uh I think at the end of the day, 2020 was a crazy year. Oh, my God. It's December, <laughs> it's December 20th today. Yeah. 11 and, more uh, days left. Hopefully, we will finish this year off, like, healthy, great. And then hopefully that 2021 will start to, like, doesn't feel like a pain in the ass. Yeah. Like, I knew this year was going to be in the pain in the ass in the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. The year. I went out to celebrate New Year's with my family from 2019 to 2020. Yeah. And I flew back in from Chicago to New York, LaGuardia Airport. And I had just parked my car right outside of LaGuardia Airport. When I get to the car, the car is just smashed. You know, like they stole all the airbags. What? You know? Yeah, that was like this, this so that January was the 6th. Start of your year. This, you're like, this is going to be great. Yeah, this January awesome. six, January 6th, you know? And when, when that happened, I was like... I have a I have a feeling this year is gonna be fucked up. <laughs> you <know? laughs> You're like, if this is how day if, one if, is starting, if, like, if this is how the beginning of the year is starting, like, I don't even want to know how it's gonna end. Obviously, the first six months was so stressful for me, for for, for this year. But like, the the rest six months is just me. Like, how can I say, getting out from un uncertainty and making a certainty in my life, right? To to make this content. It brings it brings a lot of meaning to my life, you know, and I love doing it, and that's why I flew out here uh, in Utah to make this video. 
Um, yeah, and I I love to collaborate with someone like you. Yeah. Obviously, if uh, if I have something to say to uh, other people out there who are watching this video, go out there, make new friends, new connections, network a lot. Uh, there's a lot of people on the planet that you can like become um, related to, right? Obviously, I believe uh, I was there to shoot a music video last year yeah. in, in California. And we're sitting in the room, right? Me, my friend, Natan, and then Nassim Black, he's like a rapper. He's like, there's a reason why we're all sitting here in this room. Right. It's the way we think. It's We almost think the same way and we have the same kind of energy. That's why we're working. If we wouldn't have that energy of sharing the same kind of values, we wouldn't be in this room all together. Right. We, we were talking about mindset and the people you keep in your life, right? Exactly. So whenever, like yesterday, we had like, I don't know, 10 hours to ourselves to talk to each other. Like, I felt like the way we think are like almost the same way. You know what I mean? And it wouldn't be, I, I don't think the universe would bring us together you know, to collaborate on this video or take this adventure together. If we didn't, like, how can I say, click, you know what I mean? It would have been a long 14-hour drive. Yeah, we just <laughs> hated each other. No, I'm, t I'm telling you. No, you're right, man. The universe wouldn't make us work that way, you know what yeah. I mean? We would have never. Yeah, we would have never collaborated. We, we would have probably never, um, uh, how can I say, uh, took that drive and then make make these videos and that's why when I uh, Try to collaborate with other people and who don't answer and I don't get answers back. I'm like This person is just not meant to be because we're probably not in the same. How can I say mindset or? Uh, the way we think is just too different, you know, so uh, Universe just like clicks everything in. that's what I'm like, you know happy about like I have uh, How can I say? I have uh, given my, uh, I don't know, how do you, how do I come up with this sentence? I've given my will to the universe, so universe just does everything for me. You know what I mean? I don't force things anymore right. to 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 anyone or anything, and that's what like makes me happy. You know, and then whenever whenever universe just uh, adds everything up for your life, and then this is what you get. I'm just so happy with it. Yeah, and I think the signs are there and the opportunities Cause people get, are there. Yeah, because people it's about get taking it. You know. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, a lot of people get frustrated. Yeah. W why is this thing not happening in my life? Why is this thing not happening in my life? Right. Mm -hmm. Like I've built and developed uh, a feeling of like, well, maybe a better thing is around the corner kind of thing when well, we talked about like instead of this happening to you it's like why is this happening, happening for me even if it's a negative thing yeah there's something you're going to learn and be able to like grow as a human being and a person and yeah. then drive on that improvement right and exactly. a lot of that is in the realm of mindset and how you think about failures and success and everything so. exactly so i had a blast coming here to utah salt lake city shout out to you um i really loved it here even though it was a short stay, I'm catching a flight like maybe an hour or two. Uh, thank you, David, for uh, giving me your time and t taking me out to the desert to show me that thing and uh, just share your life stories. That was really touching. Um, if you guys are not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next podcast. All right. Sounds good, man. See you. All right. Take care.